Welcome to House Seats Presents. Woo! I'm holding my pink penis up in the air for today. Ding, 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 ding. This is going to be indicative of how this is going to go. Indicative. Oh, my gosh. And I didn't even plan on that. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to have Edie here today. Oh, my gosh. You're just like one of my favorite people in the whole city. So this you is are like too kind. Thank this you. is the most gratifying thing for me to have you here. Thank you. Um, we've been doing the show for a short time now. And uh, Andy and uh, Andy and uh, Jay, who are out in the audience today. Hi, y'all. Andy's he's been very excited to have you on here, too, because we're, we're talking all Zumandy. And Andy actually used to work for Cirque du Soleil. Oh, so. Oh, yes. We have quite a little vast house at House Seats. Um, so we're going to talk all things uh, Zumanity today. We're going to talk a little bit of the weekend. So the weekend was kind of long for us. Usually we do like a little weekend roundup. This mm-hmm. week was a very lengthy weekend. It was uh, packed. See, I, we, I keep getting penises on my finger. I know. They're all over the place. I know. It's confetti. Woo! But it doesn't make me mad. It, it doesn't make me mad either to have penises all over our stage today. Okay. Um, so this week marked the opening of our new arena here in Vegas, right behind yes. your house. Directly behind. Directly behind, in the park. Uh, we had We went to see the Killers on Wednesday night. And I had to work. I wish I was there. You know what? I grew up with most of these guys for in Vegas. In fact, I used to see, like, Ronnie Venucci, the drummer, used to play. Lives in my neighborhood. Does he live in your neighborhood? He lives in my neighborhood. Nice. He, I used to watch him uh, in my friend's backyard mm-hmm. when I was a teenager. They played in a band called the Attaboy Skip. And they were all in the band. Well, not all of them, but some of them were in the band because they all grew up here. And mm-hmm. I grew up here. And uh, I, I was ashamed that I didn't know any songs from them. I didn't. I didn't know one killer song. Everyone says, "Don't you know this song?" I'm like, I don't know. But even anything. when you heard the concert, you didn't think didn't like recognize oh. not one song. Oh, see, I I might be that way too. They were really good, yeah. but I felt like we were still watching that backyard neighborhood yeah. sort of concert. How cool though, right? Yeah, no, it was cool. I mean, they were definitely like, like the lighting, amazing. The lasers. We have a couple pictures, and then we have a picture of the arena empty as well. Look how big this place is. It's twenty two thousand people. Yep. This is huge. That's crazy. Yeah. This this our parking garage is oh, too I, small. I for was going to say, how do you? We they Ubered made there. Park, they made us park at the Bellagio. How, did you take the all of New York? Monorail, New York employees or? had to park at the Bellagio. at the Bellagio. That's like the and, longest city block in Vegas. And then, but, to but Flamingo. they took really good care of us. They commuted yeah. us down. Oh, okay, okay. You didn't have to walk back. in your outfit in your heels. You didn't have to walk down. Huh? You didn't uh, have to walk down from no. Bellagio to New. We were shuttled. <laughs> <laughs> you had the Edie shuttle. <laughs> We were shuttled. No, that's, that's, I mean, you know, we Ubered there because we were afraid about parking and how all that was going to be. But no, the arena is amazing. So that was the aftermath of the killers. And then we're going to fast forward to the next night. (laughs) We were very busy this weekend to Ariana Grande and Nicki Minaj. Wow. That was a different show. Oh my gosh. So different demographic of audience, definitely. Nicki was about two hours late to the show. Yeah. They're all doing that now. I know. It was annoying. Why? I'm like, it's so disrespectful. It is disrespectful. Of course, we were a little late to True. your show last night, but you, you started did. on time. You missed my opening. No, my big spectacular so opening. We have to go. We have to come back. We have to come back and see did it you again. See my opening. Yeah. Is your opening just like this? Is look how large they made these. No. Now, man, it, her ass is large anyway, but it's much larger when you're looking at it from I mean, like the big jumbo forty screen. foot jumbotron. Because yeah. there they are down there, and you can still Tiny. see it. But yeah, yeah, it she is massive. But when you've got one crazy. like that, and it's I know. perky and she, gorgeous. She was fun, though. I felt like, though, we were all, we all said this afterwards because we were sitting next to a lot of T Mobile employees. I felt like it was a T Mobile specific employee show that they right. let other people come to because right. she kept saying, oh, T Mobile's here. And then, you know, she invites people out from the audience. And, and, and you know, like when you well, guys. It's called the T Mobile Arena. Yes, it is. So they have to throw they that have name to do out. That. And you know what? Verizon doesn't work very well in the arena. <laughs> <laughs> Our phones didn't. Snapchat was not working over there for Jay very much. So it was kind of tough to. They're like, hmm, is this supposed to happen that way? Yes, probably. Uh, yeah. They block everyone else who doesn't have T Mobile. Um, but so we're in the audience with all these T Mobile people. And so they, and, you know, she invited up a few people in the audience to do like a little moment. And I don't know if this happens in your show, but the one girl brought up her cell phone. And, you know, they have a staff photographer t- taking the photo so it comes out right. right. This girl kept bringing her cell phone up like this, you know. And Nikki just kept pushing it down like that the whole, the whole time. <laughs> just every time this girl's trying to take a photo, she's like, oh, no. Yeah. Oh no. oh, no. No, you can't take photos at Zumanity because everybody's no. naked. Yeah. So, like, the second somebody puts a phone up, the guys with their little laser lights come zooming right down. down. And, like, and they'll like actually make you even erase it. Oh, yeah. yeah. They should just have you check your phone in. 
at the front when you get in there. Somebody they did tried- that. Celine Dion. I was when say, she first opened yes. a new day, they they like confiscated phones at the front. But now you have to confiscate Everyone. everyone's phone because everybody has one. And we were talking about this at the top of the show before we even came on. So I actually worked on Zumanity in 2003 helping with the celebrity wrangling of all the people that came to the opening. Yeah. And I'm trying to find photos. And all the photos basically live on either Getty or Wire Image that nobody had a phone. No one had a phone camera. Right. No one had digital. No one really did a lot of that stuff. So we're trying to piece together photos. I'm like, where are the photos of like, you know, the party? And you've probably heard about the legendary party on the roof. of. I heard, I I am so jealous I was not there. I heard it was absolutely incredible. And that a crane lifted a band over the top and laid it down on the top of the parking garage. um, They had these drummers. Yeah. And they were called, I think they had a name. It was like the... Like suspended drummer moment or whatever, because yeah. they took them. Yeah, they took them on cranes over the, garage, over the garage, and they played the drums, you know, while the party was going on. Yeah, and then Guy built a um, like a VIP area above the garage, so there was like this middle area that went even higher than the garage that he had for VIPs. It yeah. was insane, and I think we almost so the VIPs took wouldn't the, have to like roam around with no, the common folk. No, mm-hmm. um, no, yeah. no, all of their parties. Nobody throws a party like Circus. No one, no Nobody. one, and no one ever has. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, those are the days yeah. where, um, and so you're sort of coming up, I, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I know you're coming up on 13 years that Zumanity's been around and you've been in the show with for eight years. Right. It's time to throw another party. Do you know, Cirque. do you know that we're having our 6,000th show um, in two weeks? Oh, in two weeks? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Our okay, everybody, 000. everybody out there in the Woo! audience. Six, six thousand shows. Six thousand shows, and and in two months is my personal four thousandth show. That's hard to say. That's um, four thousand shows. Yeah. Four thousandth. Four thousandth show. Oh, can I and just I tell can, you a quick story? Well, yeah, please. Now that we're uh, yeah, we're stumbling over our tongues. We're into it. So I, I, and this is not to like name drop, or, but I'm going to. Yeah. But just because I want you to try this, I got to dance on Rosie O'Donnell's one thousandth episode. So I was. See how slow I went. So mm, I, thousand. Well, I was so excited that I got the job, you know, yeah. in New York, just auditioning for everything and stuff. And I got the job and stuff. And I'm running around going, oh my God, I just got a job dancing on Rosie O'Donnell's 1000th episode. <laughs> Wait. And I swear I could not say it. So now I want you to say it. Say it. One, one thousand. Now, see, I, I heard say you it. say that. 1000th episode. But just say it naturally. 1000th. 1000th. That's tough. 1000th episode. 1000th yeah. episode. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> That was probably her last show, but your first show. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so, no, you know what? I'm going to go right into this because I think okay. our weekend was crazy. We ended up at Ellie Golding at Mandalay Bay after that. We've had a ton of stuff going. I think it was, we almost likened it. We, we go to EDC every year. We yeah. almost likened it to our last day. Like, no one has the energy to get there. Yeah. To, we had DW brunch the next day on Sunday. I mean, we've been really busy. That's, and so getting to the show, it was like, oh, my gosh. I'm so, this was like the highlight yeah. of our week was getting to the show last night. Aww. No, seriously, because I haven't seen it. And we were. I was talking to our friends that we went with, Amy and Jimmy. Um, and they, you know, I had... A lot of Cirque shows that I've seen back in the day, I was invited to as on you know, press night. Yeah. So there's still a lot of bugs to work out. Yeah. And you don't get a chance to go back and see it again. We have no bugs. You have no, yeah. <laughs> no lots, bugs to work lot, out. But lots of body. We lots have of lots body. of body and lots nudity. Of body. It's funny too. The it's, show's really hilarious. It is so funny. So, you know, Edie comes out at the top of the show, which we missed. Which you missed. Um, which we missed. Yeah, but many times through the show, so you sort of guide the audience through this journey. Sexual journey. Sexual sexual journey. Yes. Um, where a lot of people, you know, over the years what I when I kept up with the show, um, you know, people in the beginning they would walk out of the show, they wouldn't know what to expect. Um, but I feel like, you know, sort of you know, sexual revolutions and things that go on in the world, I think the show really does a great pointed way of getting the audience up to a certain level. It's of of enjoyment that I way. think that we we approach it in such a, a, a nurturing way, a loving way that people let their guards down and yeah. they really have a good time. Um, you know, we're not like shoving it down their throat. Right. And they did walk away um, uh, 13 years ago, you know, especially yeah. when the two men would kiss. Yeah. Yes. You know, we had some very conservative people that would be like, they would walk out. Yeah. Nobody walks out anymore. Right. They're, they're actually cheering. Oh, they don't want to leave. They're cheering. Right. <laughs> I think ushers were asking people to keep moving last night. <laughs> No. <laughs> We're like, doesn't the cast come out for a special moment? Do we go backstage? Oh, you mean afterwards? Oh, yeah. You're like, do we go backstage? Or see, I worked on Loretta. Because they're horny and they want oh, to see what's yeah, going yeah. to happen now. But see, what, I'm all worked up. You don't expect me to just leave. When you're talking about backstage and where you, you know, you know, you you share, you know, common area with everyone. You know, when we worked, I worked on the Rev for a brief minute at Win when it first opened and we would hang out on the pool level after the show. 
you know, that's all I need to say about that. Because everybody before, before we're coming off, yeah. you're like, dang. Yeah. I mean, some of those bodies are absolutely amazing in yeah. the show. I, I mean, get to shower with them, too. <laughs> it's co-ed showers. Co-ed showers yeah. with Zumanity. We scrub each other's backs. Oh. I feel like there's an after show moment. You know what? Zumanity behind the show. But yeah, we, they used to do we should tours do, of Jubilee. Yeah, you could do tours of Zumanity. Theater. I wish I could have done a tour of Jubilee. Yeah. Oh, I I didn't do it. Did I do it? I don't know if I did it. That is. But yeah, that show was the longest running show. Yeah. Ever no. in Vegas. No. 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 Uh oh, we're standing corrected here. What's the longest running show? Follies Berger. Uh. Forty nine years. But there you go. It didn't beat the record of Follies in Vegas. In Vegas, yes, at in the Vegas. Tropicana, because it was the 49th 49. year, the economy was crashing, and yeah. all the shows were like closing. Yeah. And Follies Berger, everybody wanted it to just hang on to the big 5-0, just yeah. get to the big 5-0. So 5-0. they were before, they were before Jubilee. Well, they closed um, right after I got here, like yeah. 08, 09. Oh, yeah, but they were but they were ahead, they were before Jubilee opened. Yeah. Is what you mean? Wow. Follies Berger, yeah. Okay. See Tina Walsh? We weren't quite yeah. there, but we had her on it, shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like we got yeah, uh-huh. yeah. thousandth show, thousandth. one thousandth show. Um, okay, so oh, there's I'm, a penis. In I my, know there are penises everywhere. A penis in my drink. We have gifts too. We're gonna we're gonna look. I'm gonna look on our chat thing. Oh, Danny's on, so Danny's gonna get a. D- Danny hosts the show on the network. Dan, we're gonna give Danny a gift. Danny, you're gonna get the screw kit. It's the Get Lucky Essentials Pleasure Set of condoms, lubricant, and a pair of mints. So, Danny, I'll leave this for you for but your what's, show. What's the screw mean? This, uh, well, oh, oh, you know. Oh, I wasn't I'll very, leave that for you. Wow. I wasn't very oh, quick okay. on that one. Wasn't I? Wow. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. I thought, that, well, I thought it was some <laughs> fetish. I thought well, it was some fetish or something. We have some other items about. here. that. So uh, that's what I wanted to get back to. When you're talking about how you brought the, the whole audience to on a journey. Mm-hmm. We, so after the show, we took a picture in the tub, you know, as mm-hmm. you leave mm-hmm. and ran into um, some ladies that were ones. Yeah, there we are. Rub a dub dub. Oh, cute. That's our friend Jimmy. Right there. Jimmy's and then Amy cute. was taking, yeah. Amy took the picture of us in there. There's Amy right there, yeah. Nice. Oh, we're a wild bunch. Definitely I want to hang out with you guys. Oh, we have a good time. That yeah. was all of those things that you saw. We yeah. did all of those things together. <laughs> Every one of them. And Ellie I Golden, just worked everything. the whole time. And yeah. you're out playing and living. You have dark days coming. Yeah, but my there. dark days are Wednesdays and Thursdays. And no, no, nobody. I mean like for a week you have. For right. a week, I'm going to Florida. Oh, see, there you go. See, you're going to take us with you. I'm going to Fort Lauderdale and to Key West. To where your man is in Fort Lauderdale. Yep, working. Let me go say hi. But the 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 point I was making about sorry, I'm sorry. No, I it's changing okay. The subject. It's okay because I have to keep myself. In, There's in a penis my head. in my drink, I know, and then we go off into a whole nother tangent. Um, the journey you bring people on. Yes, <laughs> I was I was saying to Scott up at the top of the show. It feels like um, almost a motivational speaker because you leave out of there like so energized, horny, whatever. But you leave out of there with a con- like a, a camaraderie among all of the people that see the show. That and is I so feel cool. like, you know, it doesn't dissipate right away. And we ran into the same two girls that took our picture. Um, they um, one was a school principal. Right. And one was a third grade teacher. And they they got in the tub and they did their thing. And then we saw them in the casino later. And it's just like this unspoken like, hey, we just went through this great show. And everybody, you know, I was even amazed. And and some of them may be plants, some of them not. You know, the, the not, yeah, the, not the, one the, is the lady a plant. Those are actual audience members. And they're so agree. I mean, the, the the woman who was a local. Who came up on stage? Oh. who was totally grinding on your one guy? And her daughter was in the audience. Yeah, her daughter, and then her 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 UPS her UPS son in soon was, to be son in law. Uh huh. Was he not the most beautiful was, thing you've was, ever oh seen? Oh my gosh! You're all, like you said, you know, the UPS man we have doesn't look like that. But you know, your guys were just going along his belly like this yeah. the whole show and or the whole part of that yeah. show. And I'm just amazed that I was like I said, you've brought everybody to this point where they're okay. With getting up on stage in front of everyone and, and doing this. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a huge testament to how the show totally brings people together that way. Well, there's different ways of hosting. You know, you yeah. can just host a show where you're just sitting there and you're like, listen to me, and you sit there and I'm going to do my job and stuff. But yeah. I, I don't like that. And yeah. I don't feel that's very appropriate for Zumanity. Right. I like the idea that, like, I'm not literally doing this, but I, I'm scooping the audience up with us all together. Yeah. We're all going to experience this together. Yeah. You know, because I'm going to learn something tonight, too, because right. you're a whole new group of people. Yeah. And so we're all going to, you know, go on this journey together. And so the audience cracks me up. Yeah. And you're the safe zone for them to say it's OK I hope so, yeah. to think about some of the things that they thought. Everyone's thought about it. I mean, yeah. you know, you might go up to an audience member who says no right off the bat. But, like when I ask yeah. a question, you know, uh, uh, do you, have you ever th- thought of a three-way? Yeah. No. Yeah, you have. No. Yeah. No. Yes, everybody has. And then Everyone they're like, has. and they're like, okay, well, if everybody yeah. else has, then yes, I do too. Yeah. You know. So it's yeah, it's fun. 
makes it, me laugh. It definitely creates that zone. So tell tell us about how you even got to this journey, how you ended up with Zumanity, because I heard before you had been trained ballet dancer and you had done how did you get into the character and how did you come to find this in within yourself well i was i was in the ballet professionally 11 years and then i uh moved to new york city to pursue musical theater which was my earliest dream because i started dancing when i was eight in oregon Mm -hmm. which is kind of bizarre right oregon a dancer in oregon Mm -hmm. it's not oregon i know i'm just not gone it's still there it's oregon Um, origami so and then um uh i created the character on halloween once Mm -hmm. and um i was offered a job that night Oh, wow. And yeah, it was really crazy. It was, and I'm like, no, no, I don't know. This is just a Halloween costume. So, but then I started thinking about it, you know, um, and my partner at the time was like, you really should do this because you're auditioning for stuff and you don't have a job right now. Mm-hmm. And at least this is, you know, mm-hmm. your rent for the month, you know? Right. So I said, okay, cause I felt obligated to do it. And then I did it. And then the following week when I came back, um, well, first of all, I was like, I don't even know what to do. What do I do? And he goes, just be fabulous. So for an hour and a half, I just had to be fabulous. Mm-hmm. Or no, I'm sorry, three hours. I just had to be fabulous. And he's going to pay me $150 plus dinner and drinks. <laughs> and I was like, I can do this. I, I can do this. Well, it was the next week that I went that I, um, I, when I walked in the door, there was a big group of people. Mm-hmm. And they're like, Edie, we're here. And I'm like, yay, for what? <laughs> and they're like, we came back to see you. We were here last week. And I'm like, and then the performer kicked in. Yeah. That now you, you have a responsibility to be there. You know, if people are mm-hmm. waiting for you, mm-hmm. that, I mean, gosh. It was really overwhelming. Yeah. So that's when the performer kicked in, and um, it and uh, it uh, just all started to explode in New York City. Yeah. And then um, uh, I started performing at all the different resorts, you know, like in Provincetown and mm-hmm. Fire Island, and you did the circuit. Uh, of the I circuit. did the Atlantis cruises yeah. for ten years. Oh wow! And um, every one of my guests has been on a cruise ship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You haven't? No. Every one of my guests yeah. that I've had have all. Oh, I've been on a cruise ship. No, we oh. worked on cruise ships. Yes. Yeah. And um. And then um, I got a phone call out of the blue from Cirque du Soleil. Yeah. And she said, hello, my name is Krista Monson from Cirque du Soleil Casting. I said, shut up. Who is this? Because I thought it was a prank. Because why yeah. would they call me? Like, why on earth would why they call would me? Why would Cirque du Soleil call yeah. me? Yeah. And they, she said, she just repeated it again. She says, my name is Krista Monson from Cirque du Soleil Casting, and I'd like to speak to Edie. I said, I am so sorry. She goes, it's okay. I get this all the time. <laughs> so basically, she wanted me to audition for to replace Joey. Yeah. And I didn't know at the time, but I know now that they um, did a nationwide search and then they narrowed it down to eight people and they flew us to Las Vegas Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and then we auditioned on the stage and, um, I got the job and it was really overwhelming. What was the audition process like when you got there? Was, was, they gave, was, was Guy there and everyone there? They gave me two songs to sing, one that they gave me and then one of my own. They, um, Asked me to do the the orgy scene with the mm-hmm. ad lib portion, but it was really hard because there was no audience. So I'm like, "So hi, what's your name? <laughs> Cricket. I love that name, Cricket." Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> it was really hard. But um, and then uh, yeah, and then I got the job, and it was crazy. I forgot what your question was. Well, how you? <laughs> now I forgot. Not the original no. question. The audition process, like, what was it like when you when you were there? Like it, you it said, was, the orgy scene, and but yeah, it was frightening. I was just doing. Yeah. I I just had to do that, sing the two songs, do the orgy monologue. Yeah, but it's hard because it's interactive, right? And um, in front of some very big Cirque du Soleil big wigs, right. he was not there, no. right? Right. And um, uh, it, it was really nerve wracking, as you can imagine. But I had a little awesome moment mm-hmm. because I flew in from New York City to, and then I stayed at the New York New York hotel where. Okay. Zumanity plays nightly, 10 shows a week, <laughs> weekly, 10 shows a week, um, <laughs> 7 o'clock and 9.30. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was standing there and they told me to be downstairs at 2.30 um, in front of the box office. And I was standing there and I'm just waiting and I'm nervous and I'm noticing the facade of the Christopher Street subway stop. Mm-hmm. And I noticed a street sign that says Bleecker Street yep. and a street sign that says Christopher Street. Yeah. And I couldn't believe it because I had flown 3,000 miles to stand at my intersection where I live in New York City. Look, oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And I'm like, this is crazy. That is so crazy, isn't you, it? Wow. I teared up a little that's, bit, too. That's amazing. Yeah. Your life landed you right where yeah. it needed to be. I flew six hours to be standing <laughs> in the same spot I left. <laughs> And now there's a bathtub on that corner. <laughs> yeah, that's right true, now. right? And that's where we took our photo yeah. on your street. That is amazing. Yeah. That's an amazing it's a pretty cool story. story huh? Wow. I and never think about it, so that's why I just Right, no, no. 
that that's yeah. that's that's the coolest story. And yeah. you know, we we've talked when we've talked over the last few weeks with different people and their auditions. You know, that's one of the things we like to cover here because. Um, I think when we had Tina Walsh on, she was talking about Jubilee and, and she, you know, she was dancing for, uh, you know, Fluff and for a Don Arden at the time. And she was very much liking it too. you know, the, the, you know, the old Barbara Streisand movie. And she's like the follies out there and like, is anyone out there? Who's yeah. out there while I'm doing, you probably performed in front of New York, New York and MGM big wigs too, that you didn't even know in the room. Oh, you don't know. Yeah. Cause when I worked on it, it was so funny. The show, obviously 13 years ago, like you said, it was sort of, um, a little out there for audiences in some sense. We, I mean, there was, I remember there was a scene that they took out with a with a very large prosthetic uh, penis, yeah, a very large, like uh, I think it was silver, yeah, and it, it was in the show for a little while. I think one of the executives had to cut cut, cut it out. Cut. They had to do a little Raina Bobbit and cut it out. It was very, but you know what? The show was so advanced. I thought you were like it was circumcised or it was uncircumcised, but now it's circumcised. Now it's now it's one of these sizes. It's like oh, that's not what you meant by cut it. Cut it. Uh, <laughs> but that's that's one of the 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 progress that the world has made. Yeah. You know, I mean, the scene and last I see night, yeah. it. I see it yeah. nightly. Yeah. You know, there used to be a point where before I got there where people would walk out of the show. Yeah. And then there was a point when the guys would kiss in our show and they would um, boo. Yeah. You'd hear a few macho guys boo and mm-hmm, stuff. Mm-hmm. Nobody boos anymore. Yeah. You know, and I mean, n- n- 95% of the people, you know, are very cool. But right. you had one, you know, hick or somebody trying to be overly macho who right. was like, you know, I don't condone this. And, you know, I got my girl here and that's <laughs> gross. <laughs> But then other people would be like, no, yeah, that's he was, beautiful. Yeah, he was applauding. You know, and people you do it at grown poignantly in the show where, and, and it's a new scene for me that I have, don't remember it as at all, but, you know, the cell block scene of them, there's no real music around it. It's yeah. all sort of interacted between the two. And so yeah. when they kiss, all you hear is the audience reaction. Yeah. And if there's nothing like our night last night, it was like, it's silent. Yeah. And then people like, way to go. Or you hear that yeah. little bit of like that. You yeah. hear that just a little dim of people like, not quite knowing what their reaction is well, going to be. Well, the first wave it. of applause yeah, are the homosexuals. Uh-huh. They're so happy to see, like, <laughs> so happy to right. see, like, We're oh so my happy gosh, gays somebody... kissing. Yes. And then the second it is wave of, of uh, is, is all the women who love it. You oh, know? yeah, yeah. So awesome. it's cool. It's, it's really cool. cool. So, aside from Zumandi, we have to, and I know we're limited on time. I have to see where we are. Oh my gosh. Okay. We are, so you are very in the community here as well. And one of the things, obviously, moving to Vegas, and that's something we talk about, too, people choosing Vegas uh, as their life and not going back home to New York and not and not leaving our town, staying here and making this your home. You've gotten very involved in, in community aspects and bringing the character to other places like Golden Rainbow, yeah. for instance, it's UW Ribbon of Life. And I, I've been a supporter of Ribbon of Life a long time. And the, the highlight of Ribbon of Life is having you. I mean, oh. in years past, you and Chris, but you, do, that's what I look forward to. Oh, you're so sweet. No, because the acts, again, you're, 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 you're MC, uh, extraordinaire, and you know, for people who really, uh, they know who you are, and that whole audience knows who you are. How it's, flattering is it's it? It's so comfortable to sit there and be guided through the show. Yeah, it's so flattering that they've asked me back six years in a row now. Wow! And this year okay. is the thirtieth anniversary. Yeah, this is this is. The 30th. And they have uh, Sean um, Sean McAllister uh-huh. from Fox mm-hmm. News. Yeah. Uh, is co-hosting with me again because yeah. Chris Saldana has moved to he's Arizona. Austin, or he's in Texas. Yeah. I'm sorry. Texas, he's Texas. in Austin, Texas. Yeah. And, um, but he's flying back. So the three of us are going to mm-hmm. host this year. That's going to be fun. It's so that's good. That's at the Tropicana. That's in June. Yep. June 6th. 12th. 12th. June 12th. 11th. Some, we'll get that for you. Sorry. T- it's the second Sunday in June. It is the, the second the, Sunday. The Sunday before Father's Day. Yes. So it don't worry. Yeah. It's it's uh, at one o'clock at the at the Tropicana. I can't wait. Yeah. It's really so, exciting. And have you. We, but to do charity stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and to, to host gay pride and all of those events mean so much to me. I mean, I, I have to do it. I love it so much. Mm-hmm. I love my community so much. Yeah. I love Las Vegas. I never thought in a million years I would like living here Yeah, and I love it. The difference obviously coming from New York where you were last to come here and then be uh, probably it's part going of that. from 400 square foot apartment to a 4,500 <laughs> square foot house. See, there you go. That's the difference. Mm-hmm. And I love it. I'm running through the house going, where are you? Hello? Anybody here? When I grew up, we had the back in the day, those intercom systems yeah. in the house. So you're like, where'd you go? Yeah. Which part of that wing are you in? Yeah. In New yeah. York City, I'd be going, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. Mm-hmm. But there was no one else in the house. It was just me. That's <laughs> how so small it was. But you stayed. And I think the longevity and, you know, the community itself. I'm born and raised here and I've seen the community grow, especially the gay community grow in a way. And it still has a long way to go. But I think for us, we have, you know, Andy out in the audience. He's helped us do, you know, these set list shows. And we, par- we put partnered to bring on shows. 
and put shows together. And I think, you know, we're responsible responsible for the community that we have here mm -hmm. to make it yes. like we have it yes. in other cities. And that's why it is so important to me to be a big part of it. Um, I think, you know, a lot of people do complain about it. And I'm like, but we can change it. Mm -hmm. Let's make it better. Let's make it wonderful. As a performer, especially with the Cirque organization, I think that is a huge network of performers. And, um, you know, the camaraderie among all the shows. Mm -hmm. Do you get a chance to go to all the shows oh, that yeah. Cirque puts on? I go I go to shows on my days off. All the shows. Nice. Cirque, non-Cirque. I love them. I love to go see shows and to support my friends because yeah. I'm friends with a lot of those people. We definitely need to bring her out on our next outing because of all the things that we can yes. do. Yes. We have to go out on uh, what night again, is it? What, what is your dark nights again? My, Wednesday, Thursday. Wednesday, Thursday. You know, and you know what? Wednesday okay. is like the worst Saturday. My, it's my Saturday yeah. night. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Wednesday. What is there to do on Wednesday? Underwear night oh, at Charlie's. Well, we went to the killer. Underwear night at Charlie's. Underwear night at Charlie's. We have, uh, and then Scott wants, yeah, Scott wants to see Zumanity really bad over there. Uh huh. Here you go, Scott. There's we, Zumanity. We right can there. arrange that. <laughs> These straws are really. <laughs> Aren't they fun? They're oh, fun. He hates me now because I think it kind of hurts his ears <laughs> putting it in there. <laughs> you do, you do. Um, in, in the show and the aspect of, you know, as many shows as they put on. I mean, did, did, did was there ever talk in Cirque World that it would ever close Humanity? I no. mean, yeah. No. I, I am so excited that I hadn't seen it the for that beauty, long. The beauty of, uh, of Cirque du Soleil is that it's it's always growing thing. Yeah. And if something doesn't work or something falls flat or something is needs finesse, yeah. you know, they they give it love. Yeah. And, um, or they'll switch it out with something else or whatever. It's always yeah. growing and morphing. And it's in the opposite with Broadway. The right. opening night of Broadway is the show closes forever. Yep. It can never yeah. be changed. It, so jokes get old and it gets stale and it's too bad because it would be really cool if they could just, you know, give it just some new it life revamped. and stuff. Right. And they can't. So some Broadway shows last forever because they're just timeless, but some get kind of old and feel old and stale, right. but they're still great. And if I just wish that they could do what Cirque's able to do. Right. And I love Cirque for that because also it, it, it taught me a lot too, that me as a person, I, I can grow and try things and, yeah. you know, and I do now yeah. because it's okay. How yeah. often do, is there rehearsals or things like that that still happen? Yeah, where think, daily. You know, things change shows. And trainings. Yeah. A lot of, uh, all the acrobats and stuff have to do trainings and yeah. the dancers have to train and lift weights and do all that stuff. I imagine that but it's show, regulated. So it's not yeah. too much so that they're too tired for stage or, right. um, we also have backup acts that s switch in if somebody's feeling a cramp or something. Um, it is such an awesome machine that Cirque du Soleil has created, and I, I love it. I think it's it's a wonderful family. Do you get cramps? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your replacement when you're not in the show? I have I have an understudy. Oh, you do? But they're leaving actually at the end of this contract, okay. so uh, they will be. Uh, they have a new one coming in. I don't know who it is. You don't. Know. No, no, no. Look, he just sat up I, real This is tall. as close as I'm going to hold a, this sort of penis thing in my hand and be like, okay, blah, blah. Because um, it's normally where? <laughs> under the table, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, time to give away another prize. How about this one? <laughs> uh, the quick and easy and reusable <clears throat> oops out. It is, I feel like I'm doing an advert. Oops, out. it is a garment deodorant remover. Let's see who's on the chat room. Oh, Steve I. Steve I says, work. he's working now. What are you working on, Steve I? Uh, Steve I, you can now work on garment deodorant removal. We'll save this for you here. We'll send it. Who you know, picked this? Uh, we had a lot of fun at the store yesterday. I know, but if all the stuff at the store, the, it's a porno store, right? Well, yeah. You pick deodorant remover? We're watching our budget here on our Vegas video network. Was this in like a, a bin of like 50 cents? Shh. Oh, it is. It's four dollars. That's hilarious. Don't don't Shh. give away the secrets. You know, a lot of things you in the store are pretty the expensive. Picking this the up. price tag's still on it, right? It's not going to be returned. It's going. It's going to stay here. I think there's a no refund policy on the bottom of the I, receipt. I think so. But yeah, we spent a little bit of money there. We also have bondage tape too. So. Is that bondage tape? Yeah, in, in many colors. It looks like electrical tape. <laughs> well, I'm sure that's probably Shocking. how it works. <laughs> um. See, now I lost my track. Oh, guests that you've had at the show. What? We're out of time almost. We've only had one. We, Nene Leaks for one week. Nene Leaks. Oh, no. Oh, perfect. Is that what you meant? No, but I also meant like the people that come to the show. Lady Bunny. 
Have they been? I mean, she's yeah. she came to the opening in 2003, but yeah. have people come in back and? No. Oh my gosh. Yes, they all come back. Stop, huge Scott. celebrities. Huge celebrities. And how do celebrities go when they come to the show? Do they are they like in the couches? Are they into it? Are they yeah. all? Oh, totally. Over the, totally. Do they come up on stage at all? Too, um, they have. Yes, we have. Okay. Uh, sometimes though, we don't like to pull them on stage because they. Yeah. We just want them to watch the show. Yeah. Um, they might have releases they have to sign for doing all that. Yeah. Um, so that would probably yeah. work. So Edie's going to come back on our show because we're out of time. I would love to. So Please come see. Let's Manity. have a little penis fight here. Oh my gosh. With our straws. <laughs> With our straws. Yeah. Da, da, da. We love you. We can't wait to see a Golden Rainbow. Zumanity is actually dark starting this Wednesday for a week. For one week. One week, because you're going to Florida. Correct. And then we'll be they'll be back. But the show plays every night seven at seven thirty and seven thirty and nine thirty. Seven thirty seven. And nine. No, seven and seven nine. Seven and nine thirty. And dark Wednesday, Thursdays. Okay. Love you. Zumanity.com. Bye, everybody. Bye everyone. Woo!